We are formed by what we desire. That is a little snippet from The Most Fabulous In One Person by John Irving, which I'm here today to review. This is John Irving's most recently published novel. It was published in 2011. This is the hardback edition. It's about two, um, 425 pages long. And this is the story about Billy Abbott, who is a bisexual man growing up in the 1900s. I believe he's born around the late 1930s, 1940s. I can't remember if it's explicitly mentioned. And it follows him as he comes of age and kind of discovers himself. So the novel spans into the um, late 1900s and through the AIDS crisis and things of that nature in the U.S. Um, Billy falls in love with a transgender woman, and for clarification's sake, that is someone who was born male but self-identifies as female, and it's just a really touching story about, like I said, we're formed by what we desire. It's a really touching story about Billy discovering his sexuality and becoming okay with it. It's about him coming out to both family and friends. It is about the family members he has who influences his sexual desires. And like I said, it's a beautifully touching novel. I really thoroughly enjoyed this book. I would probably give it four and a half stars. It was truly amazing. I have been too far away from John Irving for too long. Um, it definitely carries on with some of John Irving's traditional character tropes. So for those of you who don't know, I'm a huge John Irving fan, and I believe this is the ninth, the eighth or the ninth of his novels that I've read. And I've done an exploration video, it's from my earlier YouTube days, but I'll definitely link it below if you're interested in hearing more about some of his other works. And so this book definitely kind of abides by some of John Irving's typical characteristics um, in that there is a lot of focus on wrestling as a sport. The book takes place at an all-boys boarding school for the most part, which is a setting that's pretty common to Irving. It also partly takes place in Austria. Austria factors into Irving's novels quite a bit. The main character is a fiction writer as a lot of Irving's characters are, is portrayed as a very confessional character. John Irving himself notes that in his novels that are written in first person, a lot of them are very confessional and have to do a lot with our sexual desires, and sexual desires most specifically that might be taboo. Um, and I will link to his author webpage where he talks about this book because it's really very interesting. Um, there are a lot of references to more classic works. Um, in this instance, there are references to Charles Dickens, specifically Great Expectations, to a few Shakespeare plays, to Madame Bovary, which is one of my favorite classics, and also to Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin, which ends up being a novel that greatly influences our character when he reads it as a young boy. Um, as I said, the prose style in this novel is very typical of John Irving. It's very beautiful. It's very descriptive. Um, again, it's very confessional. His first person novels have this confessional and nostalgic feel to them, especially as they're often kind of coming of age novels. And I just, I love it. Every time I pick up John Irving's work, I fall in love with his writing all over again. There's actually a quote from the book that's describing the narrator and the narrator as a fiction novelist his writing style, which I think really per perfectly encapsulates Irving's writing style in this book as well, and that is, Bill is a fiction writer, but he writes in the first person voice in a style that is tell-all confessional. In fact, his fiction sounds as much like a memoir as he can make it sound. And this does have a memoir-esque quality, which I found very interesting. I worried going into it knowing that John Irving um, at least openly identifies as heterosexual, I was a little worried, you know, we have this debate about whether white authors can write good characters of color and things of that nature, and I worried about John Irving, who identifies as heterosexual, writing about bisexual and gay and transgender characters. Um, and I can't say 
from my personal experience, whether he hits the mark, but it felt very honest to me. John Irving doesn't seem to really display any biases um, towards the sexual lifestyles of his characters at all. He is very open with them. There are sexually graphic scenes between men, between men and women, between Billy and transgender women um, that all felt very natural and that didn't make me feel like kind of, you know, wincy, like, oh, maybe he doesn't know what he's talking about. I didn't get that from him at all, and I looked into it a little bit more. And again, from the same um, description that Irving wrote himself for the book that I will link down below, um, he writes the following. Billy is not me. He comes from my imagining what I might have been like if I'd acted on all my earliest impulses as a young teenager. Most of us don't ever act on our earliest sexual imaginings. In fact, most of us would rather forget them, not me. I think our sympathy for others comes, in part, from our ability to remember our feelings, to be honest about what we felt like doing. Certainly, sexual tolerance comes from being honest with ourselves about what we have imagined sexually. And John Irving goes even further to describe how in his teenage years he did imagine um, sexual circumstances with people like his friend's mothers and boys on his wrestling team and things like that. So I think that this is coming from a very honest place, if not necessarily wholly from experience, which I really appreciated and really enjoyed. I don't want to ramble on about this book for too long. I just wanted to give you a brief overview of the major themes and how I thought the author handled the main issues in the novel. Um, if you have read the book and would like to discuss it further in the comments, please do so. If you've read any of John Irving's work and would like to discuss it further in the comments, I would absolutely love to. Um, if you, I would love to also to get a discussion going about whether you think that Authors who don't necessarily identify as gay or bisexual or it's transgender or what have you can write characters that are gay or bisexual or transgender because like I said, I know that that is a debate among authors who write characters of color and I know it's been up for discussion lately and I, like I said, I think that John Irving handled it beautifully but as someone who identifies as heterosexual myself, I don't know that I'm necessarily in a place to judge that, per se. So if you'd like to discuss that, I would absolutely love to. Um, if you have any further questions, please let me know in the comments. And I will see you all soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!